This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Very good evening and welcome to Headlines Now. Cinematic delights will uh, greet you this weekend. But NETV Hindu is getting to you a sneak peek of what you can expect. The stars from Chukubuku Preeti and director Mani Kantan have, will be joining us in our studios for an exclusive chat with our executive editor Sanjay Pinto. But we're also looking at some critical stories that are coming to light at this hour. After NDTV Hindu's expose on the land scam in Chennai, key officials from TNHP evade the media glare, while opposition parties slam the government. Does this speak of complicity? Also, Chennai, the industrial hub, but an illegal arms hub? Our reporter Pratiksha discovers how it could be locked and load for just 5,000 rupees. Now this, even as a metal major sterite stares at hard facts, according to environmentalists, is the Tuticorin copper smelting plant heading for closure. Matney weekend awaits you, even as some tough questions await answers. We'll get you all of that in the next half hour. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Deep impact, NDTV Hindu's expose on the land scam rocks Tamil Nadu. In the political fallout, CPM Rida reacts to the report. I appeal to Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, please to look into the matter fully and cancel all the applications. So they should be criminally penalized for this type of action. Locked and loaded, the safety is off as the gun trade booms in the city. Get a piece for just 5,000 rupees. UN calls for a probe after visual proof of gross war crimes committed by the Rajapaksa regime. Lankan Tamils humiliated, tortured and killed. Water wars of a different kind, Kadalore on high alert due to floods. Rains claim seven more lives overnight. The rains have stopped here but still the anxiety continues on the water that could come from the other districts and make things worse for people here in Kadalore. An activist say Tutik Orin now has an uncanny resemblance to Bhopal thanks to Sterlite Industries. Child were to accidentally consume 3.5 grams of that soil, he or she would face very serious health consequences. And US Ambassador Timothy Romer gets candid with our executive editor Sanjay Pinto. Uh, you need to stop the leaks from taking place, and uh, we hope to vigorously prosecute this person. Let's also take a look at developments from around the country. Another embarrassment for B.S. Yedirappa, a minister resigns after an FIR is filed against him by the Loka Yukta over a land scam. The Supreme Court clears Mayavati's controversial Noida Park with conditions statues can't exceed 25% of the park. The Civil Aviation Ministry objects to a steep hike in air pay affairs as proposed by private airlines. After standing firm, Chief Vigilance Commissioner Thomas may finally resign today before the Supreme Court hearing on Monday. 26 years on, after outrage over the June verdict, many of the promises made to Bhopal disaster victims have not been kept. And MS Dhoni is now the king of good times. He signs a deal with Vijay Malia's UB Group for 26 crore rupees. And the big story, NDTV Hindu has rocked the state of Tamil Nadu and the powerful elite in the seated in the seat of power in Chennai. In a land scam for perhaps the record books, NDTV Hindu uncovered a dirty trail of questionable land allotments to say the least. NDTV Hindu cornered in on fake social worker certificates being used or rather abused to manipulate the system into securing land in the city's most posh and affluent neighbourhoods. With a few token gestures of self-oriented social work, the alleged beneficiaries availed of the provisions meant for people with genuine and honest intent. The political dimensions also came to the foray as uh, people with association to many known political figures were known to be the beneficiaries. Now, after the NDTV Hindu caught the scamsters pulling the trigger, the recoil of the land scam expose has caught the self-serving social workers off guard. The entire state is reeling in a sense of shock. Reactions are coming in from political parties and social workers alike. Now, the dust has not settled on Raja's misadventures with the 2G spectrum and these uh, revelations by NDTV Hindu have raised a storm in the circles of power. After an embarrassed BJP in Karnataka over Yedirappa's alleged land scam and Congress being, re being left uh, red-faced in Maharashtra after Ashok Chavan's alleged involvement in the other society housing scam, what fate awaits the political stakeholders here in Tamil Nadu? A scam of such proportions is likely to leave the now exposed scamsters reeling. In reactions coming in from political circles, the CPM and the TMMK have slammed the government. 
They have also demanded that the allotments be revoked immediately. So I appeal to Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, please to look into the matter fully and cancel all the applications and ask them to please return the money to them. Otherwise this scam, minister's daughter is getting here some plot. They are claiming them they are all social workers. So it's very unfortunate. And Tamil Nadu is, I think it's going, it is somewhere it's going back to us. For others, I think this should not stop with cancelling the allotment. Um, that uh, they should be criminally penalized for this type of action and all those people who have been responsible for uh, uh, granting houses on the basis of fake social service uh, certificate, they should also be punished. Okay. And those were the political reactions coming in, but what about the beneficiaries? Yasoda, one of the Tamil Nadu Congress MLAs indicted in the land scam, has vehemently refuted all the allegations levelled against her and said that she is entitled to own the land allotted to her. Now this, even as she enlisted the cases of social service. <laughs> Now, meanwhile, even as the focus now shifts to the Tamil Nadu Housing Board, the officials are scampering away from the media glare and are looking to find shelter behind closed doors. And even as our reporter Shabir Ahmed tried to get the reaction of Ashok Dogra, the TNHP secretary, we were busy, we were being offered flimsy excuses. Now, moving ahead in some other disturbing developments, uh, by now you would have seen the video we uh, are about to talk about. Again, aired by Britain's uh, Channel 4, this is a chilling video of a Sri Lankan soldier allegedly executing and torturing naked, blindfolded men and women said to be members or sympathisers of the LTTE. Now, the pro-LTTE Tamilnet website identified one of the women as a, a journalist, Shobha. Channel 4 said that the video was shot just before the final triumph of the Sri Lankan troops over the Tamil Tigers in May last year. The soldiers are heard, are heard talking to themselves and Channel 4 claimed that the conversation suggests that the woman was sexually assaulted before executions. Now, the killings took place in a field littered with naked bodies. British media quoted Rajapaksa as saying that the Sri Lankan army did not kill any civilians during the war and that the video is fake. Now, Channel 4 said that it could not independently verify the authenticity of the video. Meanwhile, the Ministry of External Affairs in India has refused to comment on these visuals. Now, a section of advocates in the Madras High Court today protested, demanding trial of the Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksa for war crimes. Now, the war videos purposely taken towards the end of Sri Lanka's war with the Tamil Tigers rebels last year has created an international outcry. The advocates raised slogans seeking action against the war crimes committed by the Mahinda Rajapaksa regime. Now we're heading into a small break. On the other side, meet the US Ambassador Timothy Romer in conversation with Sanjay Pinto in just a little while.